Hello everyone, this is Colin Goebel. This is step two of my demonstration of developing a platform game. Remember last time when we ran the game, we were able, I hope, to get Mario running and animating to the right and to the left. This time we want to be in a position to have Mario jump. Let's take a look at how we might accomplish that. Key thing here with Mario is that if the user presses the up arrow, uh, let's see, press the up arrow, the question arises whether Mario is standing on a wall when you press the up arrow or not. Because the up arrow should do nothing if Mario isn't standing on a wall. Otherwise, he's going to be flying in midair. So we're going to see if there is an object at position. We want to know if Mario, one pixel below Mario, remember y is the, is the distance from the top of the frame. Positive y moves down the window. So if the wall begins one pixel below Mario relative, in that case, we're going to start a block, and what we want to do is have Mario start moving upwards at a speed of 24, an initial velocity vector of upwards of 24 pixels per second. Okay, if the, there's no wall right below Mario, then this block of code does not execute because of the if statement, and so an up, the, hitting the up arrow has no effect unless Mario is standing on the wall. Now, you'll notice that Mario doesn't keep going upwards. After Mario starts an initial velocity, he eventually comes back down to Earth under the, under the influence of gravity. And so let's take a look at how that gets done. On the step event, therefore, every game step, the first thing we look to see is if Mario's vertical speed is greater than the 16. If so, we start a block and we set the vertical speed to 16. This variable named vSpeed is a built-in variable to GameMaker, and it controls the vertical speed of an object. The reason we don't want Mario going faster than 16 uh, pixels per second is because if, it, if he does, he can in fact move through the walls because um, he can move r right through the wall in one game frame. And we want to make sure when Mario passes through a wall that a collision occurs with that wall object. So we're going to make that happen on every game frame by, by maxing out Mario's speed at a maximum value of 16 pixels per second. Now the next question arises is, is there a wall immediately under Mario? So if there is a wall right under Mario, notice the Y coordinate is set to 1, one pixel below Mario, relative. And if that's a wall, if, there's, if there is a wall at that position, we're going to set the gravity to zero. We're going to turn gravity off because we don't want Mario being pulled down into the wall. If that happens, you'll see that Mario gets stuck on the wall and he won't move anymore. On the other hand, if there's no uh, wall right below Mario, we are going to set the gravity. It's going to go downwards, which is an angle of 270 degrees. That's towards the bottom of the screen. And we're going to give it an acceleration of 3 pixels per second per second. Oh, excuse me, three pixels per sec, uh, three pixels per frame, uh, per frame, and so that's going to give us a downwards acceleration to simulate the effects of gravity. But again, gravity is only going to work if Mario is um, is if Mario is not standing on the wall. Okay, so to review with Mario, when he's created, we set a variable that records his direction to zero because he's facing to the right. Every step of the game, this little block of code makes sure that his speed is never more than 16 pixels per frame. And this block of code makes sure that gravity is turned on only if Mario is not immediately above a wall. If Mario is standing right on top of a wall, we must turn the gravity off. If Mario turns left, we change Mario's direction to 180. We jump five pixels to the left. We change the sprite into the sprite of Mario running left. We do much the same thing if Mario turns right. Up does no more than checks to see if there's a wall immediately below Mario. And if there is, we give Mario an upward velocity of 24. If we release the left, we just change the sprite back into Mario standing 
and the same if we release Mario right. So those are all of the events associated with Mario to get him to jump and to get the gravity to operate. Of course, if we hit the space bar, we create an instance of an object rock. And the only thing you'll notice is if, Mario, is if Mario is facing to the right, the rock goes right. And if Mario is facing to the left, Mario goes to the left, the rock goes to the left. So how do we do that? On the, the space event associated with Mario, we create an instance of object rock. The x and y coordinates of the rock are set to zero relative to Mario. So remember to check the check the relative box here. We don't want the rock in the top left corner of the screen. We want the rock to be in the same place Mario is. The rock is going to go at a speed of 10, and it's going to go in the direction that, Mar that Mario is facing. So the direction of the rock is the value stored in that variable called Mario direction. OK. So when we start this thing up now, is Mario, go if he's going to the right, the rock goes to the right. If he's going to the left, the rock goes to the left. Now you'll notice that the rock, of course, is also, uh, also um, uh, has the effects of gravity associated with it. So in the next tutorial, we'll take a look at how that's done. There's some, some more subtlety there as well. Thank you.